in conjunction with Got Knockers. Join our Facebook group and check out our fine merchandise. Oh, I think I'm a nutcase. <laughs> I'm surprised somebody hasn't called the cops on me because I'm sitting out there. I'm like watching to see, make sure nobody else is coming because I don't want to appear to be an, an idiot. And, but I'm out there and I'm watching because I want to see if I see it again. I'm like, <laughs> do I see anything out there that doesn't belong? Like it's just, now I'm just, like I go to work in the morning and I'm looking at the field. <laughs> I come home from work, I'm looking at the field. Like I just, I can't get it out of my brain. It's every day. But I just, like I said, with my experience with that, I'm just picking up in thousands and thousands. Of, like you had a map up here. There has to be thousands of signs where people said, oh, it must have been a fisherman or it must yes. have been a logger. It must have been this. Because it's just the way we're trained to think. Yeah. You know? And then we accept that it's, you know, it's a, it's a fuzzy explanation, you know, not a fuzzy big picture, but a fuzzy explanation in our own mind. Um, but we accept it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, we relate it to some rational or, or everyday type of thing. Definitely. And, and Absolutely. so really we're missing a lot of stuff out here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And the, uh, the one other exciting experience I did have during uh, trying to get, draw them out, one time I did get a oh, like the beginning, then it went to an owl sound. Mm -hmm. I asked someone who uh, knew more, and they thought it was no crap more. That was also in my show state for us. I'd done a lot of stuff in, in the show, or tried to do a lot in the show. Because it's close to where I live, and I could go down there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's been a number of sightings around there as well. There were some stuff I didn't, um, I didn't bring any equipment. I didn't just talk about that, sorry about that. But also recommend, like, a, if you really want to do it, um, some of this stuff, of course, is really advanced enough to do it. Like, um, if you want to plaster a footprint, um, I'm not gonna do that, but get some plaster and gloves. Yeah, it's interesting, he's got a four pound box. These I ordered off of Amazon, casting plaster. If you just put the water right in here, shake it up, pour it out. But these I got to just throw in my backpack. That's probably a better way to do it. Yeah. So you, don't, you don't have to make this. With this, you need some water with you. Well. Yeah, what you do with these two, you have to take a bottle well, of water. To, to, to yeah, a bottle you have to take water. a bottle of water. But I just thought they were convenient. You just threw them yes, in your backpack. Yes, it is definitely more convenient with. than what I'm going to do. Yeah. There's a recorder just so you can capture the sounds. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Um, I use this as a, my uh, you know, FLIR hook in. Oh, yeah, I have two of those. Um, those little. It'll allow your phone with an app downloaded to uh, see heat around there. And of course, uh, she has one of these too. Parabolic mic. Parabolic mic as well. And then headphones. The only thing I don't like about that is at least mine doesn't work so well in terms of running it down to a digital recorder. That, that part is not very good for some reason. That's about all I have, really. I'll just show you how this works. These fleers you can get on Amazon for like, I think these were $350 a piece. But they're a lot less expensive than buying the handheld jobbies or something like the fire department oh, yeah. uses on the fire truck. Oh, yeah. There you can see it turns your phone into So for 350 bucks, you get a pretty decent. The only bad thing, the only, well, the bad thing about any kind of thermal in general is, I think for the most part, they're gonna be deep in the woods. It's gonna be hard yeah. to see them. Yeah. Um, they only go so far and, and uh, unless they happen to come out and make a mistake more or less, it's gonna to be tough to catch them still, even with the thermal. That's why I think the only possibility really probably is a thermal drone. Although you can catch one there. Uh, I haven't heard too much of it that way, but even I have one as well, so I'm trying it as well. These are my night vision goggles that I, I bought. Again, off Amazon. Amazon's my friend. Postman loves me. <laughs> did you ever see a uh, sharper image as the thermal binoculars? Yes, I did see did, those. Do you know if anybody ever got them? Like, I don't know anyone who has them. I just saw them advertised and I was thinking that'd be kind of they were really expensive. Yeah. Really cool. Can you record with them though? I forget whether you can or not. 
See, the nice thing with using that FLIR on your phone is that you can both video and snapshot yeah, photos. Yeah, that's you can that's take true. pictures with your phone yeah. and record video with it, which yeah. I thought was pretty nice. It is pretty nice. Then, of course, I have my regular headphones to hear playback on the digital recorders that I have. Um, same parabolic mic. I always carry a tape measure in case you get that footprint. You have something to, you know, it's a little bit better than putting your foot next to it and trying to figure out just how big it actually is. I've done that before, though. Yeah. <laughs> and then, absolutely. And then I've got two other Gizmo gadgets. Only because, like, see, this is where Sean and I differ. I think there's got to be some kind of supernatural quality to this. So I went and bought a tri-field meter and a Geiger counter. And a tri-field meter just simply measures the amount of energy and electrical. So I bought one of those that I can use in the woods just to see if there's any changes in the... Because I know when I was in Allegheny mm -hmm. National Forest, we're standing there in the woods and we're waiting for things to happen, and it's like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was. And I felt the atmosphere change. Like, it got heavy. Like, I can't even describe what it was like. I mean, one minute, it's like being in here with you guys, and the next minute, like, the hair was standing up on the back of your neck, and it just, you almost felt like you couldn't breathe, because the air just got thick. Wow. And I remember saying to the two guys that I was with, I'm like, dude, <laughs> the atmosphere just changed. Like, you could just feel it. So, I did not have these on me. They were in my box back at the truck, so I didn't get to use them, but... People who believe that there might be some kind of supernatural effect to Bigfoot. Um, some of the theories are that he's somehow produces a, a different electrical charge or maybe even a radiation type frequency. So that's why I have a guy counter because you can keep track of any of changes that happen around you. Whether it's Bigfoot or not, it's kind of interesting when you're in the middle of the woods and all of a sudden you get a hit on your Geiger count and you're like, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> because be yes. something yeah. shouldn't be out there that's radiating radiation, you know what I mean? It's just kind of, it's, I don't know, just a little different. And then I think we all have headlamps that we use and usually we run on red lights in the middle of the woods. So most of my Bigfoot flashlights have all red lights in them. <coughs> but that's, of course, a video camera if you're feeling froggy. And I got a trail cam that I take and put out in the woods when we're Bigfoot hunting. I just, the problem is remembering exactly where they are. <laughs> so, um, those are just some of the tools that we use to go Bigfoot hunting. Of course, um, if you are planning on, if you're planning on joining me in March, I am charging $25 per person, but you're going to get one of these bags. It's kind of like a, an evidence kit kind of thing. There'll be a pair of tweezers, a tape, measuring tape, evidence bags. Because um, the one thing I learned being a paramedic is that if you're collecting evidence, you do not want to put it into a plastic bag because any kind of moisture in there, in plastic, it will deteriorate. So you ruin your, you ruin your sample. So like if I'm at a crime scene and I'm picking up somebody's bloody, you know, jacket, you put it in paper bags because that way the plastic doesn't degrade anything in the, in the sample. So I always have paper bags, rubber gloves, of course, because you don't want to contaminate the evidence with your DNA. And of course, a bottle of uh, water to mix the casting plaster. And the one thing I don't have in here is the bag of casting plaster, but that's, that's coming. So that's just so that everybody on the team has what they need to like be in the woods. So if you see something funny, or you, know, you see unusual hair, like obviously on a tree, if you look 10 feet up in the tree and you see hair hanging there, um, what put it there? 
because certainly a bear is not going to be 10 feet tall walking past that tree. A deer is not going to be 10 feet tall. It's got to be something. What? Is, <laughs> look, the problem is, is we don't have a Bigfoot. So if you send hair sample in and it comes back as an unknown whatever, it's because they don't have anything to compare it to. So. Yeah, that's why even the Could be a monkey was. that escaped from a truck in Danville the other day, for all we know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I had to because it just happened. I mean, how awesome. ironic is that? It is our other ironic. My great, we have little feet running around. We've got to go capture little Someone feet. Someone posted about, uh, now all the baby Bigfoot calls are going to come rolling in. <laughs> so like, this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but even the main call I played, I do not know that it might not be a wolf. Supposedly wolves are in southern New York in that neck of the woods. Now, I don't, I have serious doubts it was a wolf. And, and David Ellis from Lunar Project did like it, said he heard uh, calls like that from the Pacific Northwest. He did not proclaim it to be a wolf, and he, he's the type of person, he would know. He's the high as you can get on that type of thing. You, you, you can't, there's no police type of tough stuff to go to. But coming, word from him is good. Uh, so it's at least some kind of undocumented, likely undocumented animal in that neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. May not be Bigfoot. Could be something we we don't know. An animal we don't know makes a noise that we just don't know it's able to make. Can't rule that out. So any other to... any other sightings anybody wants to share? Do share. Uh, many, many years ago, as a police officer, and this is what kind of got me interested. Um, I, I'm guessing it's probably late 80s, early 90s. I got called to a farmer, a well known guy up in the area, not far from here, straight up this road, actually, Fair Gap area. And uh, it was like 11 30 at night. And uh, I met him. The only reason why I know it's like early 90s is right from 911 came out. Because oh. uh, anyway, uh, that was part of our conversation, but that's what I, I never thought I'd have to call 911. You know, just came to the area and they, they just use it. And uh, so I met him at his house and he came to me and was an older guy, respectable, he had no reason to make up a story. And uh, he, he said, I don't even know why I called you. He said, I just didn't know, I just needed to call somebody. And he said he, he was leaving his dog out at the back door, which is in the area of the watershed. On this side of the mountain, we were up over the top of the watershed, on the other side. And uh, he, uh, he said, uh, he had glassy eyes. He was like, you could tell he was sh shaking up because I, I just didn't know what to call. And uh, he said he went to get the dog out to go to the bathroom before they went to bed. And the dog, when he opened the door, the dog wanted to go out. And uh, he had the light on, and then he saw it in his backyard and was walking up towards the wood line, which would have been the mountain. And, uh, he said, he said to me, because I'm 6'6", six, six, he goes, Craig, it was a lot taller than you. He was guessing nine feet. And he said it was huge. He said, but you know what? As, as startled as I was, I wasn't because his eyes were so kind. And he looked at me. He just turned and looked at me and just was walking and looking at me. Away. And he said it wasn't like he was a threat. He was just kind of passing through. And But uh, that's what kind of got me interested. After that sighting, it was like, you know, the guy was actually I don't even know why I called you. He said he just I picked up the phone and called 911 and you know, shared the story. Oh, wow. um, so that's that was kind of interesting. To me. That is something else. Yeah. Um, another story, another third party story, is actually just happened just recently. A friend of mine, because he knew us all on the Bigfoot and, and you know, always watching the shows and YouTube and all that stuff. And I went to Bradford County as well, the Valley Game Forest as well. And, uh, there he was only busting on me and one day he called me all sh shook up and he was a state trooper and he was inspecting trucks over by Jim Thorpe. And uh, he went into the to the woods to take a leak and when he walked into the woods he had this, this odor. He says, oh my gosh, he's like, I'm looking around for a carcass, so, you know, I couldn't find anything, you know. And, and as he was doing his business, he saw a move from one tree to another. And uh, he did send me a picture that so we can see, he did get a photo off, and when he got done, he tried to move around to the to, to get a better picture of it behind the tree, and then he was that fast, it was gone. 
It has potential. But talk about the watershed. I go over there quite a bit. There's, there's a couple guys that work midnight shifts and we sneak over there at the night through knots. Have you gotten any responses? One night, um, we, we, did, we had a key for the, for the gates so we drive back in. And uh, the one night we did knocks and we, and we did the same thing. We go back there and hang out for a half hour and the things calm down. And that night, the, the peepers were so loud. I've ever seen. 
Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh. He zoomed in. Yeah. That's awesome. With the cell phone. Oh, so I'll these guys.